Inside Asia Today presents China so that none should perish. China, home to 1.2 billion people, one-fifth of the world's population, China, realm of the dragon. Once the domain of powerful emperors who ruled their dynasties with the authority of gods. Today, China is intent on assuming a place of ever widening global influence and dominance. Though the communists are still in control, the future is in question. However, the nation has moved beyond the worst of the terror in the years surrounding the Cultural Revolution. But the past haunts many. Millions of men, women, and children tried and failed to escape the sweeping horror of communism's carnage. The cost in human lives is estimated to be as high as a catastrophic 64 million souls. China drew a curtain across its borders, a bamboo curtain that sealed it off from the prying eyes of the outside world as effectively as if a door had slammed on an entire nation. Mao's cadre of henchmen began the task of obliterating every contrary belief. Anyone who opposed the communist regime was dealt with severely. Christians were prime targets. I was arrest, arrested on 50, 1958 only because they refused to join the three self Patriarch move, movement. Wang Mingdao and I sent him a live prisoner. We have no hope to come back. At first, I was sentenced for 15 years. That's a big shock to me, you know. And the first thing, without thinking, I said, my life is over. I began my house church 1950 here in the second floor, April 23rd, 1950. Then only 30 people. By and by people come more and more. Until 1955, the first time I, I went to prison. For only 16 months. I came out for one year more. Then 1958, I went to prison the second time, 20 years. I can't see my future anymore, and I don't know my family will live that long and still waiting for me. So I'm very depressed. I was very depressed at that time. They said uh, they are going to brainwash me. I said it's better for you to kill me than to let me go like this. I'm not going to uh, accept uh, the brainwash. Why not arrest it? I, I, my home, I uh, have six children, and have a wife, and a mother. I was up north, uh, border there, near Russia. Very cold there, and uh, poor food, and hard work. But we praise God. On 21 years, not once get ill. This is a miracle. Before I went to prison, all my co-workers, our co-workers, ready to go to prison because we know uh, in China if you preach the pure faith not mixed up with political thing you must suffer counter-revolutionary this was the charge brought against millions of Chinese citizens who refused to submit to communist doctrine the communist stranglehold on the Christian church grew tighter. Missionaries were expelled and churches closed. But God had a plan to reach China with the gospel. We have been uh, building to China since late 40. Uh, in fact, we have to acknowledge that from late 40 
until uh, late 70 we receive very few letters uh, it may be 10 or 20 every uh, year but we have to build the gospel by faith because we understand that without the uh, gospel through radio uh, they may be deprived completely of uh, the opportunity of listening to the gospel so we went to a uh uh, the what they call the government uh, sponsor the church, three self church, and they're just uh, uh, coming out. I talked to an old man about uh, seventy or eighty years old. Mm -hmm. Then, then he found out I was from uh, FEBC. He was so happy. He said, "I have been listening to you for forty years," but uh, you know, he never wrote to us. <laughs> forty yeah, years. A lot of people like that. Uh, they dare not to write mm -hmm. because it might risk their life. What you must know is that there have been many in China who have died for listening to Far East Broadcasting Company. I thank God for his loyal servants who daily send out the good news of God's great love. During this period of deepening night, when men's hearts are filled with sin and pain, what sweet spring it is to hear God's word. Now, to me, uh, radio can present the gospel to every corner of China. Now, let me quote uh, Dr. James Taylor, uh, the former general director of Overseas Missionary Fellowship. I would say uh, more than half of the people, they turn to Christ because of the radio broadcast or their first contact to the gospel is through radio. The severity of the Chinese communist regime brought an entire generation to the brink of poverty and despair. But today's China faces a new menace that may prove to be even more costly. Materialism, creating an appalling poverty of the spirit. Materialism is really advancing very, very fast. You know, all the young people want to get more money, and then, of course, uh, comes with this uh, corruption in the government, and uh, then there's a great spiritual void in the hearts of people. A lot of people have more money than we think they mm -hmm. have, and they're still not satisfied, and they're not happy. They're searching. Mm -hmm. Communism has not provided the Chinese people with answers to their problems. The pursuit of money and material goods has done nothing to bring them happiness. For some, there seems to be little to live for. I'm so tired of living. No one cares if I live or die. It would take just one quick slash across my wrists. Oh, I can't. Maybe, maybe if I turn on some music, it will be easier. Mao Zhuxi in the midst of despair, the sound of a soothing word and a message filled with hope can change a life in a matter of moments. Perhaps someone does care. She's talking about a God who loves me. I, I must learn more about this God. For many, the good news of a loving God has come to them through the radio. Yet, the ever-present fear of being discovered as a traitor to communism has kept some from sharing that hope, even within their own family. In my family, we never spoke about God. I had been listening to Christian radio and received the Lord. One day, I heard something on the program that puzzled me, and I want to ask my mother what it meant. I was afraid, but decided to ask her anyway. My mother hesitated at first, but then confessed that she too is a Christian. And so is our father. They both listen to Christian broadcasts. The next day, I caught my brother listening to an FEBC program. He was afraid of what I would say, but I told him, I am a believer, and our parents are too. Now, there is much happiness in our house. We can all speak freely about God and listen to the FEBC radio together. 
pray more for China, for our church also. First thing, revival in China. Second thing, more new converts. The third thing, more strength to stand firm. To be a member of an unregistered house church has always placed Christians at risk. But the movement continues to grow in defiance of local communist authorities. Today's Christians are living memorials to those who suffered and died under the communist regime. They are determined to continue in their faith despite every hardship. Persecution has increased, yet they are committed to carrying the hope of the gospel to their countrymen. But they cannot do it alone. Without training schools, lacking Bibles, hounded by government authorities, and often hampered by extreme poverty, Chinese Christians face an almost impossible task. They look to their brothers and sisters beyond their borders to reach out to China with spiritual aid. Only I have hope for the gospel. That's the only way to save China. Christ is the only way to save, to save China, to change China. How do we believe? You just keep praying for China. Uh, pray more for China. Because persecution is still going on. And some, some places very, very severe. Many, many in China, especially in North China and, and other places, they receive the radio from other country or from Hong Kong. That's very good. Very, uh, a great help for them. Pray for the broadcast. Pray for, for them. We really thank for thank God for that. They are our re well, really only place to, to hear the gospel. Our challenge is to respond to the needs of the people still behind the bamboo curtain. First, with prayer and then with the means to enable FEBC's gospel broadcasts to reach all of China and its many language groups. China is where FEBC began its worldwide ministry, but the vision expanded far beyond the borders of that nation to include areas where two-thirds of the world's people live. This is a work established in faith and blessed by God. It is reaching the nations with broadcasts in over 150 languages. Will you consider becoming one of our partners in FEBC's all-out effort to touch the world for Christ? Pray and give.